All right, everybody, welcome back to another video. It's been a while since I've made a uh, fruited wheat beer, and that seems very appropriate for this time of year. So today we're gonna be doing a blood orange Hefeweizen. I'm also going to be playing around with a brand new hop on the market. If it's your first time here, I just want to say welcome to the channel. Thanks for stopping by. This channel is primarily about grain to glass videos, which means in a single video you will see the entire brewing process all the way from the recipe development through the mash, through the boil, through the fermentation, and all the way up into the final tasting just in a single video. And also on this channel, I do a lot of things like equipment reviews, techniques, and other informative videos. If that's your thing, hit the subscribe button, and if you like this video, please hit that like button. I do appreciate it. So this particular beer that I'm making today was inspired by and essentially is being brewed in honor of a brewery that unfortunately had to close its doors due to the pandemic last year. And I am talking about Slum Brew, also known as Somerville Brewing Company. Anyone who's in the greater Boston area probably knows of this place. Um, I used to be a member of their running club, which was called the Happy Souls Running Club, and uh, it actually had its namesake due to a particular beer. One of their flagship beers was an outstanding Blood Orange Hefeweizen. Today, I literally spur of the moment kind of came up with this recipe and decided to try it. Hefeweizen is a rather simple beer to brew, um, and a Blood Orange Hefeweizen kind of adds a lot more complexity to it. However, today we're not really going to be doing this in a ultra complex way. I highly doubt it's going to be anything close to the original, just simply because I don't have anything to really go off of for this beer, and um, I'm kind of winging it, but I think a Blood Orange Hefeweizen is indeed a pretty solid spring beer. So we're gonna go ahead and try to make one today now in most cases when you're adding additional flavors to beer like fruit or spices or uh, Other flavors like chocolate coffee stuff like that. Uh, I would generally encourage people to stay away from uh, extracts however in some cases using an extract may actually be a better option and one of those cases just happens to be when you're making a fruit beer. I made a blueberry wheat beer in the past, that was great. Um, I used a blueberry puree. However, for this particular brew, I didn't necessarily wanna go through all the effort of finding a puree of the particular fruit that I wanted and adding it in. Sometimes those are rather hit or miss, just like extracts. However, in this case, I would recommend using either a puree or an extract. Using a whole fruit can actually cause some issues sometimes, uh, especially if you have lots and lots of chunks of fruit left over in the fermentation or pieces of the rind or pith of the fruit that you're using. Those things can add harsh flavors, but they can also end up being stuck in your, your keg, in your draft system, in your lines, uh, and it can cause a lot of issues. You don't necessarily get that with a puree, but the issue with adding any sort of highly fermentable sugar to your uh, secondary fermentation, as you would with a puree, is that you don't necessarily know exactly what the final alcohol content of your beer is, and sometimes those sugars can actually end up becoming a lot more tart than you initially anticipated. And that was the case with my blueberry uh, wheat beer as of like two years ago. I decided I was gonna go down the extract route this time for those reasons. However, not all extracts are created equal, and when it comes down to it, uh, most of the ones that you're gonna find at your home brew shop probably aren't gonna cut it. They're usually gonna be the very cheap version. Most of the ones you'll find on Amazon are also gonna be not really what you want. You need an extract that doesn't have any sort of harsh alcohol flavor to it and also has a true natural flavor. So today we're gonna to be using Olive Nation extracts. Olive Nation is partnered with many YouTubers who do home brewing, um, and I believe a lot of them use their extracts for seltzers. Now, seltzers aren't really my thing, so I figured I'd try to use it in a couple different beers here, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, Olive Nation is a company that is actually right down the road from me. I am like 45 minutes from where they are headquartered. If you want to order any extracts or whole spices from Olive Nation, you can use the code in the description box at their checkout to receive 20% off. Like I said, the base Hefeweizen is actually a relatively simple beer to brew, um, especially if you have any of these grain basket, um, electric brew in a bag type of systems. If you're using a classic three vessel system or you do incorporate a sparge into your brewing process, you may want to include about half a pound to one pound of rice hulls for this recipe simply because that will aid in your laudering process. It's not necessary if you're using an, an all-in-one system like I am, but it does help. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the recipe. Uh, very, very simple, classic Hefeweizen grist, which is five and a half pounds each of German pills 
and German wheat malt. For both of these, I am using Weirman. That should give us somewhere around the uh, 1050 range for original gravity. So for hops, um, normally you're gonna use something like Hallertau or Tetnanger uh, for bittering, but I'm actually gonna use Willamette. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do half an ounce of Willamette at 60 minutes. And then this new hop I was talking about, we're gonna use Mandarina Bavaria. Mandarina Bavaria is a relatively new German hop that actually is uh, quite infamous for throwing out lots of orange character, hence the name Mandarina, um, and it is very, very potent in both aroma and in flavor. So we're going to be doing a late boil edition of zero minutes with one ounce of Mandarina Bavaria, and I'm also going to see what happens when we dry hop with one ounce of it. So we'll do a post-fermentation dry hop with a single ounce. Uh, this is a rather low gravity beer and a rather delicate flavor, so we don't really need to go overboard on the amount of hops involved. To ferment the beer, we're gonna use Y yeast 3056, uh, which is the Bavarian wheat blend. Normally I would use Y yeast 3068 or Weinstefan Weissen yeast for the uh, Hefeweizen. However, I think the Bavarian wheat blend is gonna be an interesting change and we'll see what it does. Um, this is indeed a highly experimental beer. I'm just kind of playing with a bunch of stuff that I haven't actually used before. I've never used this yeast before and I've never used the Mandarina Bavaria before, so it should be fun. For the water profile, this is starting from eight gallons of distilled water, so if you use distilled water or RO water, you should be able to copy this water profile for your own uses. The water profile I'm using is not too high in minerals, but it is geared towards a more fuller bodied and maltier tasting beer. So we are gonna have 60 parts per million of calcium, six parts per million of magnesium, 13 parts per million of sodium, 99 parts per million of chloride, 62 parts per million of sulfate, and zero parts per million of bicarbonate. And so to get that profile, I'm starting with eight gallons of distilled water. I'm adding two grams of gypsum, two grams of epsom, one gram of sodium chloride, and five grams of calcium chloride. We're going to aim for a relatively full body on this beer, so I'm going to go ahead and mash at 156 for about 90 minutes. Just a single temperature mash should be fine. No need for a protein rest or anything like that. We'll be fine. So I'm excited to see how this works. It could be good, could be terrible. We'll find out. Everything is all heated up now, so let's go over there and mash in. Once the strike water in my claw hammer supply 120 volt system reached the required temperature, I mashed in with my grain bill, being sure to break up any clumps I had in the mesh. Next, I started the recirculation. During this brew, I unfortunately forgot to get a pH sample, so I don't actually know what the mash pH was. However, with this grain bill and with the water profile selected, I probably would have needed to slightly acidify it with a little bit of lactic acid, which I also didn't do. So if you are brewing this recipe, I would recommend checking your pH and adjusting as needed. I let the mash sit for 90 minutes at about 156 degrees. Once the mash had completed, I set the temperature on the controller to 170 degrees for the mash out. This step denatures all enzymes in the mash and it helps the wort drain through the grain bed a bit easier. After reaching the mash out temperature, I let it stay there for about 15 minutes and then I pulled out the grain basket and let that drain for another 15 minutes. However, as soon as I did that, I fired up my controller to about 100% power to get a jump start on the boil, and I pulled a sample of work for the pre-boil gravity reading. I recorded a measurement of 11.8 bricks, or about 1046, and that's just about two points lower than what I had predicted. Once I reached the boil, I added my 60 minute hop addition, which was just half an ounce of Willamette, and then I let the boil continue for the full hour. In this particular brew, I did not add any yeast nutrient or whirlflock uh, at all, but around 10 minutes, I started recirculating boiling wort through the chiller to sanitize it, uh, just the easiest way to get your chiller sanitized. At the end of the boil, I added my zero minute addition, which was just the one ounce of Mandarina Bavaria. I ended that boil and then took the whole thing inside where I could hook my chiller up to the sink and begin chilling. I let the wort chill to about 65 Fahrenheit, and then I pitched my yeast. I aerated the wort just by splashing into the fermenter. Uh, it's not as effective as aerating with pure O2, but it gets most of the job done, and it's a low gravity beer, so that's all right. I took an OG sample, and I recorded an original gravity of about 12.8 bricks, which is approximately 1051, four points lower than what Beersmith had predicted, which is actually fine for this beer, so I was very happy. Overall, the brew day went very well. It's a very hands-off brew. Um, I unfortunately did forget to take a pH reading um, until after the mash was complete, so sorry about that, guys. So now we're gonna talk about fermentation. Um, fermentation is actually gonna be pretty easy for this one as well. Hefeweizen yeast tends to do pretty much one of two things depending on what temperature range you're fermenting at. Um, if you wanna make it hotter, it's gonna end up throwing a lot more banana type character. If you make it colder, it ends up throwing a lot more clove type character. So we're talking like 72 to like 60 
that's uh, you know the relative temperatures that you would ferment at to get either one of those characters. Um, I am going to try and ferment this at about 68 degrees, or basically my ambient room temperature, uh, and I'm going to utilize the Firmzilla All-Rounder for this process. Um, I am choosing not to use my conical. I'm going to be using my conical for a different fermentation, but honestly, the conical is not actually the ideal fermentation vessel for this beer. German wheat beer like this likes to ferment in a wide, shallow vessel, which the All-Rounder is actually quite wider than the spike conical that I have, and it actually is going to benefit the overall character of the beer if I do that. So we're going to be using that and it just goes to show that you don't need fancy equipment for every single beer that you brew. Now if you want to take a different approach to adding that blood orange flavor to your beer, uh, well it's actually not a bad idea to just use that puree that I was mentioning earlier. I did this before with my blueberry wheat beer from I think it was like two years ago. Um, and basically you just get this large can of fruit puree, which has already been factory sanitized, and you add that to your secondary fermentation. It restarts fermentation and you get a nice bit of flavor in there. The only warning or caveat I would add to this is that um, you tend to actually have a lot of sugar fermented out of that. Uh, so both your overall amount of alcohol is going to be unknown and your final gravity is going to be actually quite lower than you probably had predicted based on your recipe design. Um, the other thing too is that with all of that, that fruit, um, it actually tends to ferment out all of the sweetness, so you might be left with a more tart beer than you planned on. So that's what happened to me with the blueberry wheat. It was actually quite tart, quite sour almost, and um, that can be off-putting for some people depending on what you want to get out of your beer. Um, in my case, with the extract, I'm not going to have to worry about those issues. Um, so. Like I said, we're going to go ahead and ferment this thing completely out. We'll keg it, and then I'll add the right amount of extract to uh, to the keg, and we'll hopefully that'll work. Uh, so in a nutshell, we'll be fermenting this beer at about 68 degrees Fahrenheit for probably about 10 days. Um, this should be a pretty quick fermentation overall, and we'll transfer to our keg, and we'll uh, add our extract. So for the final gravity on this Hefeweizen, we're looking at about 1012, uh, which is not bad. All right, so the method for actually dosing your extract is pretty simple. Just get a measuring cup like this, fill it with exactly one cup of beer, and then add a gradual amount of extract to that one cup until it tastes where you want it to taste, and then scale that up to five gallons. That's the general math involved. So I found that half a teaspoon of blood orange extract mixed into one cup of beer makes for a decent tasting flavor. Doing the math for a full five gallons said you need six ounces of extract to go into a five gallon keg, which I feel like is a recipe for disaster because six ounces of any extract is probably gonna taste horrible no matter how good the extract is. What we're gonna do is play it safe. I'm gonna add one ounce of extract and see how it goes. All right, everybody, it is now time for our tasting. Force carbonated over the course of one day just using the ye old shake the keg on gas method. Uh, it worked out pretty well, uh, especially in a hazy beer like a, like a Hefeweizen, you're not really going to have any issues doing something like that. At that point, then I started playing around with extract just to see what we could do to infuse some blood orange flavor into the beer. Anyway, it's now about a day and a half after I added those extracts and shook the keg up again, blended everything together. I think what we have now is probably the way that it's going to stay, so let's go ahead and give it a taste. The beer is called Rhymes with Orange. It comes in at 5.1% ABV and about 18 IBUs. So for appearance of the beer, it's a hazy, very light, pale straw color. Uh, very, very pale beer overall. Pours with a nice white head. When I poured it, you saw it kind of came out a little bit slowly, and it's mainly because it was initially rather overcarbonated and I had to kind of slow down the rate of pour so that it wouldn't go crazy on me. So hence, it doesn't really have a huge head on it right now. Uh, but otherwise, the color is pretty much on point. So now, going in for aroma. So right away, it's very, very orange forward. Um, it's got that kind of sweet tangerine orange kind of note to it, but also a little bit of like a candied orange. Um, and it's actually kind of cool because before I added the extract, this, this really had a pretty significant orange note coming from that mandarin of Bavaria. Um, but now it's kind of got that more of a orange and almost grapefruit character, I'd, I'd say. Yeah. 
it's very zesty, if that makes sense. Um, it smells kind of like the, the inside of the, the pith and the, uh, of the zest of the orange. It's not like orange juice, you know? Um, so, go in for mouthfeel. Like I said earlier, it's a bit heavily carbonated as it stands now, so there is a little bit of a zing in there, um, a little bit of a, a sting from the carbonation level. And then getting into kind of a perception of body on it, very much in the medium range. It doesn't have as much body, I would say, as a, as a German Hefeweizen does. Um, this is definitely a very Americanized version of uh, a European or German Hefeweizen. All right, so now we'll go for flavor. So this is an absolute um, <laughs> flavor bomb, to be honest. Uh, the backdrop of the wheat beer and the Hefeweizen in general makes a great canvas for painting any flavor on. Um, and it has a little bit of residual sweetness there to back up some of the, uh, the extract. And then as far as overall flavor goes, I'm really getting a lot of just a kind of like grapefruit and a little bit of orange. Um, and it's got, it doesn't have any, any yeast character to it. I think that's kind of lost in the rest of this. I wouldn't, I can't even find any clove or banana in this at all. It's a really pleasant beer to drink overall. Very, very easy drinking. Um, very, very citrus forward. It's kind of a, almost like a lemon to it as well. Um, the orange, the orange character that's coming through, at least in terms of the hops, is really pleasant. And then you get some from the extract as well. Um, I think that kind of just, added a little bit. Now let's go ahead and talk about the actual blood orange part of this, the extract piece. Um, and so we'll start with the good. Uh, so the good is the flavor definitely did make it into the beer. Uh, this does taste like blood orange, albeit a bit um, less sweet, I think, than some other blood orange Hefeweizen examples that I've had. It definitely has a very authentic tasting flavor. It doesn't taste artificial, it doesn't taste fake, which is good. Um, and it's there in a gentle way. It's it's not like an overpowering blood orange flavor, you know. It's it's actually like a background note. That's that. Now let's talk about the bad. Um, I think this might be error in my part, and not necessarily in the part of the extract. Um, I added too much, and I'm really glad that I didn't actually add the full scaled amount. Um, I added about one ounce of extract to a five gallon keg. And um, I think that was just a little too much still. I probably would have gone with half an ounce. So unfortunately, when you add too much extract to something, especially if it's an alcohol-based extract like this one is, uh, you will get a bit of a zing and kind of like a sharp note on the background, uh, which can cause some pretty unpleasant sensations if it's too strong. Mine is getting to that point, um, and I'm not sure if it's because all the extract that I added sank to the bottom of the keg, um, and maybe it all pulled up in there and I'm just sucking up more extract than I otherwise would have. I'm not sure if that's the case or if I just added too much in general. So like I said, you gotta be careful when you're using extracts. It's a little bit of a dangerous game to play and it can come back around because different extracts have different strengths of flavor too. As far as the product that Olive Nation sent me, um, I think it's a good extract relative to a lot of the other ones that you find out there. Um, however, it still doesn't beat putting together fresh fruit in terms of flavor, but it does save you a lot in terms of convenience. Um, I obviously had no fruit material in my beer. I had no extra work ahead of me in terms of clogged poppet valves or, uh, you know, junk, chunks of fruit in lines or anything like that. So I didn't have to worry about that. And also that sharper note may actually end up fading out over time. You never know. As far as potential improvements go, uh, starting from the extract, I think I would probably cut the amount of extract used down to about half an ounce instead of a full ounce. That way you can kind of control the amount of like extract flavor you get out of this. Secondly, I would probably add some Mandarina Bavaria in the Whirlpool. Definitely had a really wonderful aroma coming through uh, because of the dry hop, and it did impact a little bit of flavor there. I'd be very interested to see what would happen if you brewed a hoppy wheat beer, not a not a Hefeweizen, but something with some more hop character in it. Um, throw one or two ounces of Mandarina Bavaria in the Whirlpool and see what that does. Um, I'd be really interested to see because it really does come across as a very nice, pleasant, orange, tangerine, grapefruit kind of character. Um, and so far, it's been one of my favorite hops that I've played around with in, in a long time, actually. I would uh, readily toss this into a New England IPA. Um, but that's a completely different beer style. So, we'll talk about the, talking about the Hefeweizen here. Um, as a American wheat style Hefeweizen, or an American Hefeweizen, I suppose, um, I think the yeast strain works out pretty well. I'm definitely interested to see that if a couple weeks go by and the extract flavor 
dissipates um, or changes or improves in any way or gets worse, um, I will be sure to let everybody know. I'll check down below for a pinned comment to see if anything changed in this beer beyond what I'm talking about right now. All right, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned something and enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Uh, I do try to post a new video roughly every week or so. I'm trying to upload right now on Friday mornings the best I can. If that's not enough content for you, though, check out my Instagram. It's at the Apartment Brewer, as well as my Patreon, which I have linked down in the description box. Also in the description box, you'll find a complete recipe uh, for this beer as I brewed it. That recipe should work pretty well for most all-in-one systems like the Grainfather or the Anvil Foundry, Robobrew, Mash and Boil, a bunch of others. Um, just tweak it as you need to for your own system. Comment down below, let me know what your experience with using flavor extracts is like. And if you're interested in purchasing any sort of whole spices or, or uh, flavor extracts from Elevation, there is a discount code down in the uh, description box that should get you about 20% off. Uh, last but not least, there's also some links in my description box that have a lot of my favorite homebrewing gear. Check those out if you happen to be in the market for it. Uh, it's a great way to help support this channel. Anyway, I will catch you guys in the next one. So until then, cheers.